What's up guys and welcome to my ranking of the Far Cry video game franchise. We just recently got Far Cry 6 released to all systems and just before that I was starting to get into a couple of the chapters that I had not played yet and so I figured now that I've completed the entire franchise, I've played every single one of them and I can actually speak to all of them, why not go ahead and rank all of them? So I'm not going to be including all of the different variations of ports, there was a lot of them on the Wii and other systems regarding the first Far Cry game and Far Cry Instincts and a bunch of different versions of the same game. So pretty much just going to be talking about the mainline games as well as the canonical side stories or the DLC chapters like Blood Dragon and New Dawn. And something to keep in mind as I go through all these games is that perspective matters 100% when you're talking about a video game franchise. You know, when you started playing it, which ones you had to go back and play when they weren't necessarily in their prime, which ones did you play the day that they released, all of that can change your perspective on video game releases, much more so than movie releases in a lot of ways. So keep that in mind. Number 10 for me, the not even I wouldn't even say worst because every single game in this list I actually like it's one of the few video game franchises where there's no stinkers as far as I'm concerned but the one that I like the least number 10 for me is the original Far Cry now keep in mind what I just said about perspective I was not able to play this game whenever it was brand new whenever it was blowing the doors off and everybody was talking about how great this was this was a PC exclusive game and unfortunately, I never had a PC growing up that was able to play even The Sims properly, let alone a huge open world, or at least semi-open world, first person shooter like this. This really kind of broke the mold for first person shooters and showing like depth of view whenever you're sniping and kind of mixing a linear storyline and a linear game trajectory with a semi-open world setting. A lot of things that Far Cry did became things that other first person shooters, even this franchise itself, learned from and expanded on. And so nothing but respect for this first game. But I unfortunately did not get a chance to play it until it was ported over to PlayStation 4. And by then it was just so dated that I really couldn't get into it. I had already played a lot of the more modern chapters in this franchise and trying to go back and retroactively play the first game where Things were revolutionary back then, but things were very dated by the time that I played it. And the difficulty level was that old school kind of video game difficulty to where it wasn't even like challenging in a fun way. It was just frustrating because of the old school game mechanics. So this is the only game on this list that I did not actually finish 100%. And unfortunately, just didn't really get a chance to play this when I wish I would have, which is when it was really the big hot thing out there. So number 10. Far Cry. Number nine is going to be Far Cry 2. Now, unbeknownst to me, this one's actually kind of a fan favorite. Now, this was the first Far Cry game that I actually got to play day one. As soon as it was released, as soon as it was announced, I went out and pre-ordered it. I was a broke as shit college student and I didn't even care. I was like, you know, can I eat well for a couple of weeks or should I play Far Cry 2? And this one. So I went to GameStop, put the little bit of money that I had down for a pre-order, got this day one. And while I really liked it at first because it really expanded with the open world and a lot of the, uh, the mechanics that they were advertising, like the fire mechanics and the more realistic take on how your vehicles work and the damage and how you have to repair them, all of that was great for a little while. But unfortunately for me, and it seems like I'm in the minority with this one, the realism that they put into this game really hindered the gameplay after a while to where it was so fucking annoying for me. Every single time I had a mission to have to drive from one end of the map to the other, and three, four times between one objective to the other, I would have to get out and do this little wrench mechanic on my car because you couldn't drive it half a mile without it fucking breaking down. There's all these little encampments, these little checkpoints that the enemies are always occupying that you always have to pass through to get to certain areas of the map and they will always shoot the shit out of your vehicle. You cannot get past them whatsoever. And they didn't have the mechanic that was adapted later on in the Far Cry franchise where you could clear these out and then take them over as your own. They were just always there. And so that added to it as well. Even the fire mechanics, which was cool, if God forbid anybody threw a grenade or shot a red barrel or did anything and you had to spend any amount of time in a certain area, that fucking fire would always take over and kill your objective or blow up something that you were supposed to take 
or kill somebody you were supposed to save. And so by about the halfway point of this game, I found myself just getting through it because I wanted to get through it. Not so much that I actually enjoyed the game. So cool game, cool game for what it was. Certainly was revolutionary for some of the mechanics that it brought in, but way, way, way better utilized in later games. So this was one of the few day one plays in this franchise that just did not age very well for me. Number eight might be the most controversial on here, but once again, keep in mind perspective, and that is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Now this was one of the most popular chapters in the Far Cry franchise because it was so unique. You have a very neon 80s aesthetic, this whole retro thing that they're going for. It's very silly, very tongue in cheek. You're playing like this cybernetic cop that's going through. You get the voice of Michael Bean. There's a bunch of Terminator and Robocop references. All of that stuff I ate up. I thought it was awesome. I really enjoyed all of that. I mean, that's my bread and butter is old school 80s action. As much as you guys know me as a horror guy, that might even compete with horror for my favorite uh, genre of film. So I loved and understood all of that. The gameplay is where it fell apart for me because while it was very cool at first to get back into a Far Cry world, but a very different tone and a very different setting and a different vibe altogether, as soon as you beat like the introductory missions and the open world opens up, it's a very bland game as far as I'm considered because you just go to a place, you can clear this little area out, you have these little blood dragons walking around. There's not really much of a story tying it all together. A lot of the cutscenes purposefully are like comic book strips so I couldn't even really engage with those a whole lot which I know I'm in the minority on and then you have just as a as an open world game I felt like I had experienced everything the game had to offer within the first hour first two hours and so I kind of lost interest and just like Far Cry 2 after a while I felt like I was just kind of going through it so that I can complete it so again a game that I enjoyed I like the style of it I would love to see a modern full-fledged game in this world if they were going to do something bonkers with like Far Cry 7 but for what it was just a glorified DLC that was kind of released as a standalone thing the gameplay itself really did feel like DLC to me. Number seven is Far Cry Primal. Now I'm one of the few that actually really liked this. A lot of people watched it and played it and they said what is this? We want to shoot. We don't want to stab things. We don't want to use a bow and arrow. And I get all of that. If you go to Far Cry for the gun mechanics, then this certainly is not the chapter for you. But going back into the caveman days and having these huge epic beasts like woolly mammoths and these different tribes of cavemen, and that's kind of where your story is through, is all of that rivalry back then. And kind of scaling back and doing something a little bit more simple with the spears and the bows, I really enjoyed it. It wasn't a game that necessarily held its steam all the way through the third act. There was certainly a point in the game where it felt like, all right, we're, we should be wrapping up by now. But for what it was, for a very simplistic version of the Far Cry world, a very Far Cry centric game that is very different from all the other chapters here. I appreciated the unique take. I appreciated the, the different vibe, the different aesthetic, the different uh, pace to the game, the settings and everything like that was beautiful for the time, especially. It looked just as good as all the other Far Cry games on PS4. So this is one that I wouldn't mind seeing them do something wild like this again. Not necessarily the same exact thing, but a Far Cry template of a game that is not your typical we just have to kill this terrorist type storyline so i dug far cry primal number six was actually my introduction to the far cry franchise and that was far cry instincts on the xbox now this was a game that was a port version of the original far cry but was very different very scaled down and retooled so that it could be played on consoles. Because back in the day, when you're talking about PlayStation 2 and Xbox, they didn't have the capabilities that computers have. People would argue that game consoles still don't have the capabilities, but the gap is certainly much, much closer nowadays to where you can put games that were on the PC, put them on a console, and it's the same exact game and it runs just fine. Nowadays, or back in the day, they didn't have that. So they had to retool this game, make it more of a linear experience, make it more scaled down, not quite as much depth, not quite as much open world. And they added this whole instinct side to it to where after a while you get these feral abilities. And I just loved this game. Probably retroactively, if I went back to it, this would not hold up very well. Like a lot of the other games on this list probably would hold up. 
but for what it was, for my introduction to this franchise, for a game that I played numerous times, absolutely loved the style of it, absolutely loved the characters and the wild story it was telling, even the multiplayer and the map creator. I mean, there was a time where me and my brother used to just get onto the Xbox, create a map where we'd make this gigantic cliff that went off into the, the water, and we would just make a ramp and just take ATVs and take cars and shit off of the, the thing and just dive bomb. Uh, just boring shit like that we used to do because we just liked the mechanics of the game. So I really enjoyed this one and I gotta love it just because it was my first Far Cry game. So number six is Instincts. Number five is gonna be the new guy and that is Far Cry 6. Now, much like Far Cry 2, the first couple hours of this game, I was really into it, was really enjoying it, was loving all the new stuff. And then after a while, it just really got monotonous for me. Now, Far Cry is one of those franchises that for years now, has been getting the criticism that this just wash, rinse, repeat, which is kind of a Ubisoft thing, just like with Assassin's Creed. They take a template, they do it over and over and over and over and over again until everybody starts to dip on their sails because they burnt out on it, and then they'll go back and reinvent it a little bit. They haven't quite gotten there to that point with Far Cry yet. Since Far Cry 3, they've essentially been making the same game over and over with a couple little tweaks and making it a little bit more modern, adding a few things, making it look prettier, but it's the same game. And until Far Cry 6, I did not feel that repetition yet. About three, four hours into Far Cry 6, I was like, I've played this game before. There's not a whole lot new here. The only thing that's new is that they had this backpack, this uh, Supremo, where you can have uh, rocket launchers, you can have something where you can blow air and knock everybody back. You have things that you can take down tanks with, with EMPs. There's a bunch of different powers with it, but that's essentially the only new thing is this little backpack super weapon. And I didn't even really like that mechanic all that much. So essentially, I'm looking at this game as every other Far Cry game. You have a protagonist, you have a setting, and you have a villain. And that's essentially what's going to shift the scales for Far Cry 3 to Far Cry 6 is which of those three elements do I like the most? And pretty much in all three, that was my least favorite in Far Cry 6. I played as the female version of Danny, which I was told was the preferred one because the voice acting was a lot more life filled, I guess, than the male version. So I can't compare, but the, the female version was fine, but the character itself just didn't really have a whole lot of punch. There wasn't really a whole lot that really made me feel for this character or made me really excited to play as this character, just kind of a generic freedom fighter. The villain, which pained me because I was so excited for this game just because Giancarlo Esposito was gonna be playing the villain, and I'm a Breaking Bad fanatic, they really underutilized the villain in this game. I mean, he was good for the scenes that he had. He was certainly diabolical. He certainly had that Gustavo Fring style menacing kind of presence that um, Giancarlo brings the villain never really shows up in the game. It's just randomly throughout the story, you'll get a little, you know, while back on the ranch <laughs> with the bad guy, him and his son will just sit there and talk for a minute, something will happen, and then they'll go back to the game, and he never really crossed paths with Danny. There was never really any threat. It was just, okay, eventually we're gonna have to shoot this guy, and then we'll, we'll win the game. And so I was a little disappointed with how they utilized his character. And the setting was fine. I mean, island-like setting, we've seen that a dime a dozen in this franchise. It was okay. It was a decent size. But uh, where I really started to lose interest in this game was that they took a lot of the classic Far Cry elements that they've utilized since 3, like the skill tree and a lot of other elements like that, and they just got rid of it. They, they switched out all of that progression system for just finding gloves and finding boots, and finding different things that you can do a loadout with. Now, while I like the whole thing about you have a conflict in front of you and you have to choose a loadout that works and kind of experiment with it, I like that for the guns. I did not like that for the clothes. I thought it was ridiculous that I had to walk into a base, switch out to the gloves to where I can you know, sabotage an alarm and then switch those gloves back out again in the menu for whatever was gonna give me less weapon sway. It was just annoying after a while getting back into the menu seven different times during a mission. So I hated the fact they got rid of the skill tree. Nonetheless, I'm not gonna rant any longer. I didn't do a full review of this game, so I was trying to get my thoughts out. I like this game. It's a good Far Cry game. If you have not experienced many or any of the Far Cry games, you will really enjoy this one. Unfortunately for longtime fans, I feel like this game was trying to do a greatest hits thing and that just kind of 
made it even more apparent that this has been the same game for over a decade now. Number four is gonna be Far Cry New Dawn. Now, this was a game that I did not play until very early on this year. This was something that came out, there was a lot of controversy regarding whether or not this merited the price tag that it had at the time because it was basically an extended DLC, not a standalone game. And a lot of people were rubbed wrong by the ending of Far Cry 5, me included, and didn't necessarily want to continue that storyline. And I gotta admit, after getting a lot of space and time between my distaste for the end of Far Cry 5 and playing this game when it was only like 15 bucks on PSN, which was more than a fair price for the game that they give you, I really enjoyed this. I loved the very colorful, flora-filled, post-apocalyptic world that you're fighting in here. I liked the characters, all of the side characters, the people you interact with, take missions for, even the villains I thought were pretty entertaining. And for what this is, yes, it's not the full-on sized Far Cry game that the mainline chapters are, but it's much more than DLC. It's like a mid-sized Far Cry game, which sometimes I like having that smaller scale open world. Sometimes I don't want to have an open world that is just going to take 30 hours to beat. Sometimes a little 15 hour game is nice. And so I really enjoyed this. And the biggest thing that made this rise on this list is that this actually made me appreciate the ending of Far Cry 5, which I will get to when I talk about Far Cry 5, but that left me so cold that it actually colored my response to the game in a very negative way. And when you get here and you have the story expansion, when they tell you what happened to Joseph Seed and you get to interact with him more as an actual character versus this guy that you just see in cutscenes and you want to kill the entire game, it really made me like his character more, it made me understand his character more, and it actually made me, like I said, appreciate the ending that before I would have told you was a terrible ending to a game. So, for what this was, I had a really good time with New Dawn. And before I get into my top three guys, be sure to like and share this video and hit that subscribe button and let me know down below what your Far Cry ranking is. Put your ranking for all of them down in the comment section below. And also consider becoming one of my Patreon members. This is a video that inevitably is not going to get a ton of views on my channel, but it's something that I really enjoy talking about. So Patreon is what allows me to take these little call them commercial breaks from my typical content and do something different because I have their financial support and I don't have to rely on whether or not this video is going to blow the charts up or not. So if you wanna check out how to financially contribute to this channel, how to keep the lights on quite literally, and also get exclusive perks and exclusive benefits for that contribution, please check down below in the video description for my Patreon link and I appreciate your consideration for that. Now as far as these top three, keep in mind what I said talking about Far Cry 6 about the three criteria that I kind of judge Far Cry games off of, the protagonist, the villain, and the setting. And that really is what shifted the scales for these three games. And coming in at number three is going to be Far Cry 4. Now, at the time, I was on Cloud 9 as a Far Cry fan. I absolutely loved what I got in Far Cry 3. Obviously, I've not talked about that game yet. This was the first Far Cry game on that current generation for what at the time was for PS4. And I... Loved the fact that it was gonna be a different setting. It was going to Tibet. The color scheme was slightly different. I love the fact that we got Troy Baker doing the voice for our villain, Pagan Ming, because him, one of the greatest video game voice actors ever, as far as I'm concerned, this was also right after Last of Us, so I really was excited to see what he was going to do next. And this is a really good game. This is a good, fun game, just like with Far Cry 6. If you have not experienced Far Cry yet, you will walk into this, you will absolutely love it. The only thing that really held this back for me was that it felt like they just kind of took everything they did in Far Cry 3 and just tried to do it again without really changing a whole lot at all, if not nothing. <laughs> it was almost exactly the same aside from the setting and the villain. But unfortunately, the setting and the villain, as well as the protagonist, wasn't as interesting as it was in Far Cry 3. Pagan Min wasn't the most interesting villain in the world. This Tibet setting was cool, not nearly as dynamic as the island setting. The protagonist here, not nearly as interesting, not nearly enough of a story to really latch onto and enjoy the character you're playing as. He's just kind of a vessel for you to run around with the, and, and you be the protagonist. So, very good game, very entertaining game, a game that I could go back to and play and not miss a beat. But of the three that I'm about to talk about, it is the one that made the least impact on me. Coming in at number two is going to be Far Cry 5. And it only rose to number two 
after I experienced New Dawn. If I did not get the continuation and the true ending of this story to make this overall Joseph Seed saga much better for me personally, this probably would have been at least two spots lower just because of the ending. Far Cry 5, what I loved about it was the change of setting, getting away from huge tropical islands, huge foreign lands, and just going into the, the western US. I believe this was in Montana. And that gave a very different look and a very different pace to the game, not going through and fighting off these tropical beasts and having islands and trees and waters and huge mountains. This was just flat land and some mountainous terrain, but for the most part, this was just America. This was just good old boy town. And so I really liked that change that this game brought with that. The other huge thing that this did that improved off of Far Cry 4 for me was the villain. You have Joseph Seed here. He's this religious cult leader. You've got his brother and his sister and the whole storyline surrounding them to where you're just this deputy that comes in and you as well as all the other people on the force are just gonna take down these crazy fucks one way or another and that's the whole story of the game is trying to take down this cult family that has taken over this entire section of montana and that was just a very cool intriguing storyline all of the dialogue and the scenes with joseph seed is very menacing and very intimidating he's a very cool villain where he's calm and calculated but just that religious speak that he comes out and just makes it sound so sinister was always really engaging the only thing that this thing dipped on was the protagonist because this made the very deliberate choice to have a silent protagonist to where you quite literally are the main character there, there's nothing here to latch on to because they want you to feel like you are the person going through this story sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't i prefer to have a character that i can remember a character that i can reference not just hey remember when that was me in far cry 5 not really big on that but this is a game that makes everything better as far as the gameplay mechanics the shooting the side missions you get the whole thing about these uh, sidekicks that you can have like cheeseburger the bear these little animals and sidekicks that can help you along the way or even humans that they'll come through and do like a uh, they'll shoot from the helicopters or whatever so that was a really cool mechanic to bring into uh, open world was scaled up quite a bit and there was a, a good enough variety in the environments without just all seeming like montana town they did a good job at kind of giving you a, a different vibe no matter where in the map that you were and the boss battles overall were pretty good as well. Really, the only thing that I did not like about this game, that I hated about this game, to be quite honest, was the ending. The whole, fuck you, you lose, the bad guy wins ending out of nowhere. and made it feel like this 20-hour journey was a waste. And you get to the end and you're like, what? The, that's what I've been fucking fighting this long for? Right there, Far Cry 5. But New Dawn, like I said, made that a lot better for me. Made that give a little bit more context. And so now I can look back pretty fondly on Far Cry 5. I think this is damn near a perfect Far Cry game. But a game that absolutely is a perfect Far Cry game is my number one, which is Far Cry 3. To me, they have not beaten this yet. They have not even come close. This is when they got everything right. They took the open world aesthetic and the, the open world uh, vibe that we got in the first game and the depth of field and the island setting and they brought in some of the mechanics that they had gotten really good at and innovative with in Far Cry 2 and they told a really good story to where you're Jason Brody the protagonist there's one point that you and your brother and your friends are off partying and then you get kidnapped by this cartel in this jungle and you have to go and one by one save all of your friends that's a story you can get behind that's a mission that you can get engaged with and as a character his voice acting and his interaction with all these different characters is very entertaining so one point there the setting the island you've never seen a better island on far cry than in this game again you got some mountainous areas you've got water you've got sharks you've got alligators you got all the different animals that you can go like the side missions and go and hunt these animals you have a lot of different mission variety you got the people in the town that you're helping you have this whole cult slash um, village this community with this uh, i forget her name but the chick that stabs you if you get the bad ending that you're working for her and every single time you get a new skill it pops up on your tattoo which is a really cool way to kind of give you a visual progression of your character the way that the game paced itself out with giving you regular shooting mechanics and then opening the world up even more and then giving you a hang glider and then eventually giving you a wingsuit to just making it more and more easy and more fun to traverse this awesome island there you go with your setting 
And then you have by far the greatest villain in Far Cry, which is Voss, a villain that they killed way too early, but spoiler alert, if you stayed around for the post credit scene in Far Cry 6, we might be seeing him again. So Voss was a character that was so, just from the trailer, he sold this game. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Just that whole speech encompasses that character. And he was always this wild ass loose cannon, just this grenade that's about to go off at any moment that he was so much fun, he was intimidating, he was somebody that you loved to hate. And that is the key element of a Far Cry game is you have to have an amazing villain. And that's something that they have been trying their damnedest to recapture ever since they killed Voss and have not really gotten back to. So this is a game that I platinumed. I played it again on the Far Cry Classic Edition uh, just about eight months ago and didn't miss a beat. It was a little bit difficult to, to adjust back to not having some of the things that they added in 4 and 5, but once I got back into the swing of it, I loved playing the game again. It still holds up. And to me, it's just an absolutely perfect Far Cry game. I have never had any issues with this game aside from killing Voss a little bit too early in the storyline, but to me, you don't get much better of a first person shooting experience than with Far Cry 3, one of my favorites. So that's it guys, that is my ranking of the Far Cry franchise. If you're a Far Cry fan, be sure to let me know your ranking down below guys and give me your full thoughts on Far Cry 6 especially because I really don't know where people are landing on this game. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do a full review, so this is the first time I'm actually being able to talk about it and interact about it. So thank you. Like and share this video. Hit the subscribe button. Be sure to check out that Patreon link and consider donating to that. It really does help this channel out tremendously. And as always, guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.